Hey everyone, Tech Steve here. This is the Sony Bravia 8 OLED television. And the thing is, I've already done a unboxing, a menu walkthrough, and I showed you gaming on the previous video. So make sure you go check that out right after this video. So today we're gonna to talk about the picture quality of this television. And a lot of people are thinking, maybe I should get the A95L. But if you look at the price difference of this TV over the X95L, you're gonna to have to spend a lot more money to get that extra performance and extra brightness. According to DisplaySpecifications.com, the Bravia 8 can do up to 900 nits of peak brightness, and this is close to the 1000 nits standard that they use in most HDR content. And I went to check it for myself, so I pulled up an application on my phone, and I just switched through the different picture profiles. Of course, we know Vivid is gonna be the brightest, but as you switch through these different profiles, you can see professional mode really dims the TV down and that'd be ideal for nighttime watching, but everything else on the television has some fairly good brightness to it. And a new test I want to try out is a thermal test using the TV after it's been on for around two hours. And at the max, I was getting about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, but as you can see, as I play different content on the television, the brighter areas are gonna be a little bit hotter than the other areas, but this gives you an understanding how the screen is performing under demand. Now back to the picture test, the first thing we wanna take a look at is upscaling because a lot of people are watching content that's not native 4K and you wanna get the best performance. Well, the interesting thing is that I tried a 480p signal on this television on the disc that I always use and it just wouldn't display. All I got was static on the screen. Now I'm saying that it might support it, it just didn't work for me. Now moving over to 720p, 1080p and 4K content, I want to show you a side by side so you can see how all the TVs perform. The interesting thing that the picture looks almost exact, but if you look at the 720p, because of the aspect ratio, it appears to crop into the image a little bit more than the 1080p and the 4K signal, but all of the signals look very good as far as upscaling. And like all the higher end Sony television, this one also has the XR processor that uses AI technology to scan the picture frame by frame and it cleans up the signal. And I will tell you that it's doing an excellent job making sure that everything that you play looks nice. And speaking of picture quality, this TV performs very well. Since each individual pixel are self lit, you will not have any kind of issues with black levels. So the demos that you're seeing right now are all high quality. And I would say that it will make the TV look better. So if you have some low quality signal, the upscaling is gonna help with that, but this TV natively likes 4K content or 1080p if you don't have a choice. Now watching TV every day won't be these demos, so let's check out YouTube TV, which is an application that streams live content. And it's something that I recommend if you have it available in your area, instead of using some of the providers out there. Now keep in mind, this is recorded content, but when I was watching this content, it looks really good on this television. As you see, the TV was a little bit bright and it clipped my camera just a little bit, but the color reproduction on it is natural. If you look at these different scenes, the grass, the skin tones, and the Bravi 8 has really good motion controls as well. So I think you'll be very happy with just watching everyday television. Of course, you can watch any type of content on this TV with the ATSC TV tuner, your inputs, or the Google TV software that's built in. But Sony stated this, they're bringing cinema home, and I must say that's where this TV performs its best is on movies. So I pulled up a few movies on Disney Plus, and wow, this TV really blew me away. Not only the black levels, but just the color reproductions of everything that it was playing. And I also want to show you the different picture profiles. So as I switch through here, you can see how the temperature and contrast changes on the television as we go through all the different settings. A lot of people do like the cinema mode and that's a great format for watching movies. But on the average, you're probably gonna be using standard mode most of the time, which was a sweet spot for me. I then switched my Apple TV over to HDR mode and wow, the brightness really came out of TVs. I know on this demo, you can't tell a huge difference, but with the HDR mode, it unlocks the full potential of the brightness of the television and the details of the screen. And the great thing is you still get all of the same picture profiles. For its skin tones, I think everything looks very natural on this TV, especially in standard mode. But if you don't like that cool look, you can always switch it over to cinema mode and it's gonna give you that warm look. In my opinion, watch the TV the way that it looks best for you. I found that the motion on this TV is very smooth and you'll be very happy with the results on your sporting events. Test out the motion, there's a few things that you wanna consider whenever you're watching content is, if you get in that soap opera effect that you don't like, 
you definitely want to go into the motion flow settings and manually adjust it so you get a much smoother picture so it doesn't look like everything is so fluent. But the great thing is the processing on this TV is so good that you have plenty of adjustments that you can make. The last thing I want to show you for this portion of the video is a dirty screen effect. And I would expect that since it is an OLED that it would be pretty solid across the screen since everything is self lit. But to my surprise, on an all white screen, there was some slight veneting around the center, but as it moved over to the black levels, since the pixels do turn off, the TV was inky black. Now, when it comes to the audio system, I will tell you that the Bravia 8 has six speakers in it, and I think it's around 60 watts. There's subwoofers in it, there's downfiring speakers, and here at the top, it also has top firing speakers that create a surround sound, and you use the Sony remote control to optimize your room with the built-in microphone but if you really want to get the best experience you might want to get a sony audio system uh, hang on for a second i'm going to show you something this is the bravia 9 soundbar and the thing about this particular soundbar is that it connects to the tv and gives you full control through a feature called bravia sync addition to that the older version which was the ht 7000 only had certain things you could do with it as far as configuring your room to give you the best sound quality. On this one, they now support an application on your phone and your phone will allow you to get the true surround sound out of the system through configuration. But for now, here's a listen to the TV speakers so you can see what it sounds like by itself. This is a Tech Steve audio test. For the next few moments, sit quietly and experience the range of this TV's audio capabilities as we test the boundaries of sound. This is the end of the Tech Steve's audio test and transmission. For those who want to stick around, I want to try something new on this video and it's giving you my best picture quality settings. And the thing is, is that right out of the box, this TV is pretty accurate. If you look at the calibration, this gives you an idea of the colors in the television. And after the calibration, there was a couple of points that were changed. And this is kind of interesting because as I'm learning this software for the first time, I will tell you that there's going to be some TVs that are completely off. But hopefully, if I learn it, I will share those settings with you and I won't charge you for it. So in order to do this, I'm using the automatic calibration settings. But keep in mind, I am waiting on my pattern generator to show up. And the thing is, is that this TV will adjust itself completely automatic using this software and putting all the parameters for me automatically. Here's a picture of the TV in cinema mode. Next, I want to show you a picture in professional mode. And these are the results I got from the Calvin software. Personally, I can't tell a big difference at all, but here's the settings if you just want to know. Now, as far as brightness, I have it at 100%. Contrast and SDR mode, I have it at 90%. And the gamma SDR, I have negative two. If we go down to the black levels, I have that at 50%. And you can kind of adjust these two things if you want as far as the black adjustments. Now, as far as brightness, you can choose how much brightness you want. I have mine at medium, but you can go high as well as low. So that'd be your personal choice. And when it comes to colors, this gets very interesting. So as you can see, I have expert mode and this was uh, created by the calibration software. So the first thing is your basic modes. I left everything pretty much at factory settings, except for the gain. I turned the green down to negative one and everything else the same. We go down to the 10 point, and this is what I use for the calibration software. There's a ton of adjustments in here. So for example, on adjustment one, I brought the blue down to 18. On adjustment two, the blue is at 14. Adjustment three, the red is at 19, and the blue is at 12. We go over to adjustment four, we have 17 for red, nine for blue. Under five, we have 15 for red, six for blue. Under six, we have negative 12 for red, negative one for green, negative 18 for blue. Under adjustment seven, we have one for red, seven for green, negative two for blue. 
Under adjustment eight, we have negative two for red, four for blue, negative six for blue. Under adjustment nine, we have negative six for red, left the green at zero, and negative 14 at blue. At adjustment 10, we have negative six for red and negative 12 for blue. And that's pretty much the settings when it comes to the color adjustments. Now, when it comes to the motion, you can adjust these any way you like. I just kind of left it at factory. And again, I have the cinema motion at high. But these are the calibration settings that I got out of the Calman software with the automatic Sony calibration settings. So that's my settings. And again, I'm new at this calibration thing. I'm still waiting on that pattern generator. So I don't have to use the computer on dual screen and just take it with a grain of salt that this is a test. If you guys like these type of settings and I find that people are watching that part of this video, I will do more TVs in the future. But keep in mind, I don't have settings for every TV on the market, just the one that I reviewed today. With that being said, here's the positive things about this television. I think it has a great picture. Sony's processing, upscaling, all that stuff is fantastic. I also think this TV has a great audio system. And if you configure it, I think you're gonna be very happy with the sound quality. But I will tell you, TV speakers are usually limited to about 50 or 60 watts. So for my taste, I definitely wanna go with an external sound bar to get the better performance. A few other things about this TV, I love the fact that now this one has four positioning for the feet, which I showed on the unboxing video. And I like the fact that this TV is thicker. So a lot of OLED TVs out there, they have such a thin piece of glass at the top that makes it feel fragile to me. This TV is not built that way. It has that nice pattern design and it has covers to hide all the wires. I also like the fact that this TV has voice command with Google. You can also do it hands-free if you want to. And I will say that when it comes to build quality, this TV is built very well. Another day when I was at Costco, I did see a variant of this television, but it was in 77 inch. But if you're not a Costco member, I'll put links to Best Buy, Amazon, and Walmart in the description below. OLED TVs are fantastic, but for me, I think they have a little bit of blue tint to them, which is very noticeable when I was recording the footage. And I would say that the fact that all the pixels turn off I think it's gonna still give you a much better picture than some of the other TVs on the market. I have the Bravia 9, and in the future, I will be comparing this TV. But when I had them side by side, one thing I noticed is that this TV, the colors popped a little bit more than the Bravia 9, but the Bravia 9 is much, much brighter. So I think that'll be a trade-off with OLED in general over mini LED. With that being said, I want to say thanks you guys for supporting the channel. We have some great videos coming out in the future. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.